Hello, this is Clint Locklear from the Farmer's Grove and just doing a little bit update. I had someone who said they want to see what the farm looks like now. This, guys, is a system that has been here for basically, in all general purposes, one summer in a month. So this, this is what it looks like. Uh, a lot of the trees coming on really strong. Uh, citrus, we're going to have some citrus, it looks like, a little bit this year. These flying dragons. These are blueberries. We've got some nectarines and peaches that's going up the hill. They're really hard to see because they're small. We got uh, three more rows going up through there. That way the frost can come off this top and hopefully not stick here and roll past them because they get seem to get hurt more than anything else. I'm putting down a tremendous amount of mulch this year because the soil, after being here a year, I figured out that it will get wet, but it will not retain moisture very well, which is really odd because it's it's almost like solid clay, but it draws out. But the, the real heavy mulch really, really seems to help when, we, when I'm walking around and I look under the mulch. I did lose a few trees, like this one right here is a persimmon. It didn't make it. I lost uh, another couple apples and one more persimmon. Asian persimmon didn't make it. All these down through here are like, you know, 1700, 1800 apple varieties, which are really cool. We lost some of our sea berry. Some of that was my fault with the bobcat, but uh, we're planting out a bunch more of those. And everything's been on contour. I can really tell by putting these little micro swales in that it's really helped with the moisture. You know, on this bottom row, it seems where a lot of the moisture stays. I'm gonna grow some watermelons and stuff down there for, for just me and Cindy. Did you did bees on the end, more persimmons, chase seedless. We've got a huge variety of stuff. I'm also starting to put in other things for pollinators, like wigglas and, and uh, rows of Sharon and different things. I don't think I'm at a point where I can contend with the field as far as just putting out echinacea and black-eyed susans and stuff like that it's going to eat it so that doesn't make sense you know because this is such a bigger scale than a backyard garden i'm not going to be able to be out here doing what i do at home we did lose probably about 30 percent of our pawpaws i think that the ground got so moist in the winter that uh, they just didn't like it a lot of our banana trees are coming back. I've got little babies besides them, which makes me happy. And then, you know, our plums and stuff are really liking this soil. The mulberries down on the end are. And uh, some of the country starting to actually put on pretty good next to everything. But this is kind of what it's like. Now, the size of this is a little over a football field that you're looking at now. All on slope. The reason I started here, because we're probably going to eventually put a house up there because there's already a, a, a footing and everything in place this way i could somewhat stay out of the way of that if i needed to now the bottom side of this is where i'm going to have chickens and ducks and it looks weedy now but that's really not weeds that's clover and hairy vetch and oats and i've done some videos on that then on this other side over here the asparagus are doing really well a lot of my nursery trees the pears the the plums and the cherries, I'll be grafting those on to move out on this other field. In the bottom part of the field, we've already got laid out with rebar, it took thousands of measurements to get that thing right. And but it got so warm so fast and we had such an issue last year with a 100 year drought that I'm gonna wait to put in all those trees. So I've probably got 300 trees in pots that I'll have to take care of this summer at, at my home nursery just to be able to do that but the cover crops down here did really really well uh they didn't do as well up here the soil is is pretty rough but i'm just going to keep adding organic material i'm going to get you know some horse manure cow manure and stuff like that and scatter around get as much life into this as i can but this is what's going on down here and it's uh it's really amazing and it, it's hard to tell on film sometime what some of this looks like when you're not in real life somewhere. But how spindly everything was with the first year of planting all this stuff out and stuff's really starting to bush out really well. It's, uh, I think it's going to be even three times more dramatic next year. And in about four to five years, this thing's going to be rocking and rolling. 
and that's the goal. It's not a short term by any stretch of the imagination of putting in big systems and thinks it's going to be like a vegetable garden where you're just going to go out and till something, throw some seeds down, and you know you've got lushness everywhere. It takes a little bit more work, but I think it's definitely going to be worth it. But that's the spring update on the Farmer's Grove.